So in this video we're looking at phases and finding different equations of motion using those phases and this is simple harmonic motion still. So if you remember a phasor is a anti-clockwise rotating vector. So we use the reference circle uh, because it matches up with the simple harmonic motion and our rotating vector. So that, that vector is rotating around and if this is our displacement vector y um, with maximum displacement equal a um, so the length of that vector is a at any point in time from the equilibrium position it's that vertical component that is the y okay and if we uh, look at our trig functions so this is looking at the displacement equation of motion as well as the displacement vector um, we're trying to use sine cos and tan our trig functions to uh, work out what that y is so y is going to be a sine theta and uh, from uh, this equation omega equals theta over time we can then rearrange to get theta equals omega t so a sine omega t let's write that in there y equals a sine omega t so your angular frequency is going to be constant your a, your maximum amplitude, or the radius of the uh, circle, or the length of the phase, or that's rotating, is also going to be constant. But t is changing. So when t changes according to um, the length of time from the start, and it's assuming that you're starting at equilibrium position of y equals zero, um, then that's going to affect that sine term, and that sine term is modifying the maximum a. So sine, remember, uh, cycles between 0 and 1 and uh, you're multiplying between 0 and 1 by that a. So when you're at your maximum displacement, so the time is at least one quarter of a cycle, or when it is one quarter of a cycle, um, your sine term is going to be maximum of 1. Um, and that means your a is going to be 1 times a, which is y equaling a at your max, that's this position just here. Okay, so that's displacement. For uh, velocity, um, we can draw a similar circle, um, but this time, let's draw it at the same location as well. Just try and remember the velocity this is a kind of small, maybe I should draw it larger. Zoom in if you can. This is our velocity vector. Okay, right on the, the end. Um, of, you know, this is the location if we're talking about something undergoing circular motion. We're still interested in the vertical component of that only. So we can, we can take that information and draw our triangle. So let's just kind of zoom in and look at that velocity. We've got a vertical component, which is what our velocity actually is. This is our maximum velocity, um, which is going to be a omega. And so our is our angle theta, um, and this time it's the adjacent angle, and you'll have to do a little bit of geometry to assure yourself that the angle that it's turned through three de theta here is going to be the same as this angle in here. Um, but you can do that with a little bit of uh, geometry um, using uh, right angles and, and such to be able to see that. In fact, you can see that. Let's just really quickly um, have a look. See, we've got that right angle there. And we've got that angle there, and uh, it's what do you call it? Two right angles inside of an, uh, each other. One right angle inside of another right angle. So here's one right angle, okay, which sets the this area and that line. So two right angles. So you've got an angle here, and if you imagine where I'm going up and down with the red thing now, the angle going between that vertical and the velocity is the same as here. So it's got to be the same angle. Um, anyway, how do you do the equation? Is going to be uh, uh, v equals a omega cos omega t, or cos theta, but remember we've got the omega t from over here, this equation. Okay. Oh, one other thing, where do we get the a omega from? Um, remember v equals r omega from our equations of motion um, for circular motion. Um, and this gives you, when, when r is a maximum position, um, in, in our case here, it's going to give you the maximum um, velocity, r times omega. Okay, And then the last one, really quickly because we're getting close to five minutes, 
um, is the um, acceleration. Um, when you're dealing with the acceleration, um, you've also got a circle drawn a bit bigger this time. And same position for our rotating um, displacement vector, y. Um, our acceleration is always towards the center. Okay, and it's constant. And in this case, a omega squared. Okay, and what we're interested in though is the vertical component once again back towards the equilibrium position. Um, so our acceleration at this point in time um, is, and there's our theta, equals, uh, and it's negative because um, it's it's in the opposite direction to the um, r relative to the direction of motion because remember it's rotating that way anti-clockwise, so it's negative trying to pull it back the other way. Um, a omega squared sine omega t. Okay, so because uh, it's still the sine function with that angle for theta, um, theta being uh, taken from this equation as omega t. Um, and a omega squared sine omega t. Um, one point, where do we get the a omega squared from in this one? So a omega squared comes from where? And do you remember in circular motion, the acceleration equals v squared over r. We saw before that v is going to be a omega. So it's a omega, square both of those, divided by r. Since a is equal to r, we're going to end up with r squared omega squared divided by r. So that's where the omega stays squared and the r does not and r equals a. So you could easily write that in this case too. Um, that's where that comes from. Now, there's a slight modifier when you're starting from maximum amplitude. Okay, the last thing that was on my bit up there. So uh, just to explain that further, if you're starting from this position instead of um, our equilibrium position, um, You've, you've got an extra 90 degrees in there, so um, you can either add that on, or if you know your sine and your cosine curves really well, there's sine uh, and there's cosine, so, um, oops, I haven't drawn them too well, but you get the idea, they're 90 degrees out of phase, so um, where one of them uh, is starting at extreme and the other one's starting at zero, you can either just add on 90 degrees, for, for this, or take away 90 degrees, depending on which way you look at it, or there is just a separate set of equations of motion, um, which are uh, a, for the displacement y equals a cos omega t, for velocity um, is negative omega a sine omega t, and for acceleration is uh, negative omega squared a cos omega t. Okay, I'm not writing those down because the video will get too long. Um, but just be aware of that. Usually you might not even need that for solving problems um, that you encounter in tests, but it can be handy.